welcome to Simply Sarap. Now today's recipe is an all-time Filipino favorite, sisig. It didn't become the sisig we knew today until the Americans occupied the Philippines and American naval soldiers would cut away the heads of the pigs and throw them out because they deemed them undesirable. We have ruins of what was called baluartes before our watchtowers. But the reason is we suffered from 200 years of motor raids. That's why they built watchtowers around the Pacific coast to be able to watch if the motors were arriving and sound the alarm. This recipe was first recorded in 1732 in a Spanish Kapampangan dictionary. And at the time, it was defined as a sour type of salad. So to start with our recipe, we're going to need banana hearts. Now here I have some prepared, but this is what banana hearts actually looks like. Now, banana hearts, they look quite like a heart shape and they grow and they blossom into banana flowers. And what you want to do is peel away all of these excess layers and you want to get down to the very core of it. So as you can see, as we peel away these layers, it gets more tender. Okay, so now we're going to cut away this stem, slice it in half, we're going to mince this into small pieces. Now you want to get them into tiny, tiny pieces. They're basically crushed. They have quite a similar texture to meat. But first, before we achieve that texture, we want to just place it in a bowl and add some vinegar. And you want to get rid of any of that stickiness and that sap that comes with it. So just really crush it. So all of the bitterness and all of the excess sap is already gone. And it's just left with these gorgeous banana hearts. All right, now to start cooking our sisig na puso ng saging, we're going to heat some oil in a pot. So for this recipe, we're going to be using an Ilocano garlic, which is a tiny type of garlic that's available locally. Now in many cuisines, people usually tend to saute the onions first. But in Filipino cuisine, particularly in Kapampangan cuisine, they like to saute their garlic and get a nice, beautiful golden brown. Now that our garlic is brown, we're going to add some onions. Now this is just a light brown color on our garlic, and you just want a light brown as well on the onions. We're going to be adding some crushed pepper. Now we're going to be adding some bay leaves. And keep sauteing that. Now to this, you want to add some pork. So I have here some pork belly that complements today's dish really well. You just want to kind of infuse it in the onions, the garlic, and the ginger. We're going to be adding some fish sauce. We can add our banana hearts that have been crushed and soaked in vinegar. Lay it out and make sure that it cooks well. So you'll cover that and leave it for another 30 minutes or so. So now we're moving on to our sisig recipe. Now this is the sisig cup of bangon recipe that everyone knows so well as a really popular Filipino sisig. So for this recipe, we're going to be using pig's ears. The principle of Filipino cuisine is to utilize as many parts of the animal as we can so that nothing goes to waste. And we're going to be cooking it for about 45 minutes to an hour or until it's just tender and tender enough to chop it and mince it into small pieces, which is what we'll be using for our sisig. So this has already been boiled and minced, as you can see. And here in the pot, I'm basically going to add just a drizzle of oil, a generous drizzle. We're going to be adding some garlic, red onions, and the same goes for our ginger. You want to kind of cook them until they reach a beautiful golden brown color, and they have a bit of that crispness to them. At this point, we'll add a generous amount of freshly crushed black pepper, and of course, slight drizzle of fish sauce. And lastly, we have here our bay leaves. I have here the minced pork face and pork ears. The idea is to really infuse our sisig with that garlic, onion, and ginger aroma, a lot of that pepper, and to get it to kind of render down. So you want to kind of constantly stir it, but also press it down into the pan and let some of that pork fat sear and get a nice coloring to it. All right, so now our sisig is fully rendered. At this point, we're going to be adding some soy sauce. Feel free to add in your onions and your ginger. 
And I'm also adding another batch of freshly ground black pepper. So I'll just make sure it's finely ground this time. Just to get that last hint of spice at the very last moment. That's when you add calamansi juice. So calamansi is a type of like lime that's prevalent here in Southeast Asia. And their citrusness has that fruity sweetness to it. It's not just acidic, which is why I really love it. So we're going to stir that into our sisig. So at this point, we're ready to plate our sisig. So we'll start off by plating the sisig na puso ng saging. So we're just going to pile it up in one big overflowing bowl of sisig na puso ng saging. And we'll top this one off with some sliced shallots. Some small rings. And then next, we're going to plate our sisig. Now to top off our sisig, we're going to be using this time some red and green chilies. Now this is siling labuyo, which is kind of a spicy chili found locally here in the Philippines. And just like that, we have our sisig in two styles. So now it's time to taste our sisig. So I'll start off with the sisig na puso ng saging because it's a personal favorite. Wow, it's so zingy. That sour note of vinegar that you kind of spot when you have the puso ng saging. Hmm. So let's try another bite of our sisig. Hmm. It's a bit crunchy and chewy from searing it and kind of letting it render down. Join me in rediscovering Filipino history and flavors in the next episodes of Simply Set Up. Visit the DFA official sites for more details.